welcome to Tom Myers vs. the Rest of the World. This is 2024 Best of and Unheard Bits, so far, part 3. In this episode, you will hear our favorite moments, plus some bits that didn't quite make the initial airings. Joining me on this episode are Jeff Heisen, Gina Brown, Blight Kitty, Michelle Wojcikowski, Valerie Pascal, Chip Jones, Chris O'Connor, Laurel Kathleen, Jim Meyer, Ward Morrow, Nicole Blessing, and David Kay. It turns out that despite Donald Trump's lawyer's uh, brief stating otherwise, there is a company that was willing to put up the full $464 plus million dollar bond for his appeal in the New York fraud case. They've made that public, and now New York Attorney General Letitia James may investigate to see if Trump can be penalized further. It might be difficult if only the state of New York had any evidence of a pattern of Trump lying about his finances to get more favorable <laughs> loans. <laughs> Trump clarified his position on abortion earlier this week. He said he's in favor of letting the states decide their laws for themselves. That's quite a change from one of his previous positions, which was what most Americans have done. Forget about and disregard his daughter, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona's Supreme Court upheld an abortion law that was written in that state in 1864. It says a lot about today's modern Republican Party that they're trying to relate to people by championing a law that was written while black people were still considered property. <laughs> <laughs> The Republicans who petitioned the Arizona court must have been holdovers from the ones who looked at the Emancipation Proclamation and told Lincoln, uh, sir, are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> there is a bright side, though. The law does say that a pregnancy can be terminated, provided the procedure is done using leeches. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> Donald Trump's criminal trial started on Monday. He fell asleep during the first moments of the first day of the trial. I could see how that would happen. If he and people like him don't get enough racism, xenophobia, and demonization of women in a particular form, they would find it boring enough to doze off as well. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's the exact reason why the number of incels who used to listen to the show has greatly decreased since the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> It's gotten so bad, Donald Trump is basically like an old blanket that your child hangs on to that will never get clean no matter how many times you wash it. So you sneak it away when your child isn't looking and you just burn the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is the toy that keeps dying no matter how many fresh batteries you put into it. You have to get rid of it and just rationalize to yourself. He'll cry for a little bit and forget about the damn thing in a week, week and a half tops. <laughs> now, Joe Biden received a major endorsement in his reelection campaign from the Kennedy family. They endorsed him over their own relative, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. It has to sting for RFK Jr. to not receive the endorsement of his family. It probably would have been even worse if the Kennedy family had made the endorsement in a hotel kitchen. Oh, Oh. oh, two congressmen, Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin and Jake Letourneau of Kansas, announced they will not seek reelection to their seats. That makes 21 House Republicans to date who are not seeking reelection for various reasons, including some committee chairpersons. I suppose that saves them the trouble of whether or not they will die in the mass suicide pact that Republicans will undertake should Trump lose again in November. <laughs> Uh, President Biden did an interview with Howard Stern. I thought it was a good interview, but it took quite a bit of criticism, mainly from podcasters and comics who don't understand the concept of supporting a presidential candidate whose supporters don't decorate the walls of the Capitol with their own feces. <laughs> I have a theory that they're also jealous of Biden because historically speaking, he's the only man who could meet an 81 million person bring. <laughs> It was revealed that years ago, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. admitted to having a worm in his head that ate a part of his brain and died. 
dead worm is actually the medical condition that explains why he has only six children, which is a low number for a Kennedy. <laughs> I don't know if you heard in the news, but this past week, Donald Trump was convicted of all 34 counts of falsification of business documents when he paid off Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet about a sexual relationship that Trump had with her years ago. Trump must feel bad as he never even had 34 wins the entire time that he owned the New Jersey Generals football team. <laughs> this proves that Donald Trump and I are not alike. For instance, after I have sex with someone, the woman pays me not to talk about it, which is why I can afford to stay at home and do this podcast. <laughs> The fact that Stormy Daniels was a key witness that led to a guilty verdict just proves what I've been saying all along. Porn stars will save this country. And this Thanksgiving may be the first one where I get to declare that in front of my family without being asked to leave the table. <laughs> Trump supporters are comparing him being found guilty to Jesus being found guilty. I won't buy the comparison until I win the sweepstakes to hammer in the first nail. <laughs> if you think the entire right-wing media sphere can keep the ginned up biden is crooked narrative going then you would thankfully be wrong in this clip fox host jesse waters is taken to task when someone close calls in to respond to his commentary we have a very special guest on the line a democrat my mom mom hello how have there, you jesse. hello there mom <laughs> How have you um, enjoyed the show so far? I have enjoyed the show. I want to say congratulations, Honey Bun. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments, <laughs> you. and you've worked so hard. Now let's aim to have you keep your job. And <laughs> to that end, I do have some suggestions. Okay. Do not tumble into any conspiracy rabbit holes. <laughs> we do not want to lose you, and we want no lawsuits. Okay. In, okay. In yeah. keeping, I, I have a list here. In keeping okay. with the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. We need you to be kind and respectful. Okay. You yourself mentioned that humble is a stretch, so I, I get that. <laughs> Use your voice responsibly to promote conversation that maintains a narrative thread. There, there really has been enough Biden bashing, and the laptop is <laughs> old. Perhaps you could suggest that your people take less interest, for example, in other people's bodies, and talk about that. <laughs> what do you want to bet she's in a home now? <laughs> wow. He, he get, I think he gets the, the latter day of the whoever's left feeling like they're still in a frat at 45. Like, that's his audience. You know, he just looks like a Sigma Chi guy who, you know, was, look, was hazing somebody the wrong way. Deserves to get beat up at recess. He's that kid. <laughs> <laughs> and then be, and then between being called like honey bun, chastising him and saying, oh, no, I've got a list. Like I could just see I could just visualize his balls shrinking slowly and slowly until they just <laughs> re retreat behind his kidneys. Maybe they'll pop out during spring break two years from now. But aside from that, that's that's their permanent residence. I think she was just having the moment of, OK, this talk didn't work in high school. It didn't work in college. Let's try public embarrassment. Yep. There's a junior <laughs> producer somewhere who just got fired over that segment for sure. For <laughs> sure. It'll be so cute to have your mom on. No, it will not. <laughs> It'll That's be why... so cute to have your mom come to your comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> mom, you're embarrassing me in front of my audience. Right. <laughs> All the old people watching me. I guess Bobart can say that to her grandkids, right? I'm an embarrassment on TV. <laughs> <laughs> While enough networks and podcasts have played the Howard Stern clip of Donald Trump talking about how he wanted to terminate his wife's pregnancy, this clip shows an even more cringe moment from a behind-the-scenes look of Stern's radio show and is the perfect metaphor for how Donald Trump uses women as a means to his own personal end in his interaction 
with one of Howard Stern's interns. What do you want me to sign, Jennifer? Okay. Can I use your back? I love this. This is fun. Using Jennifer's back to sign a release. I could do this all day long. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. So how was it? You got to have Mr. Trump sign the release? He signed it right back. And how did it feel? Amazing. How did he look to you? Look awesome. Really? Yeah. I think he liked the outfit. You think he did? Mm-hmm. Right, now, what do you hope to get out of this today? It's just the day I got to meet Donald Trump. That Stockholm Syndrome is something, isn't it? Oh, my Ooh. gosh. The watch. Oh. Yeah, I think the young kids call that pretty cringe. <laughs> oh. God, I... Ugh. You 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 can edit the podcast so that if I gag and vomit, it's not going to appear for the listeners. It's an audio <laughs> podcast, so it, the sound effects would be a great addition. I think. I think part of it, honestly, is that we maybe people knew him then, right? But we've come to know him, and none of that behavior has changed. It's just we're just watching it because I try to think back to my younger days, right? Where, you know, a little bit of flirting here and there and whatever. And is that, I'm trying to put myself in a situation where, um, in where when we didn't have everything recorded because that I did grow up in that era where you would go to work, right? And people would say things and you sort of just brush it off. Um, And sometimes, but I, we didn't have, like, I guess it's hard to watch. And so I, it's hard for me to sort of, it, it grosses me out because I know who he is. But then I also try to think, I'm like, well, have I ever had that situation at work where somebody's just, you know, and I mean, it does mm-hmm. happen, right? And it's it's less, maybe it's less gross when it happens to you at the moment. Although, I mean, she definitely did, was very, very interested in the fact that he touched her back and liked her outfit and the whole deal. I don't know if I, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to. I, I, will I don't. Say, I'm not trying to both sides it. I hate both no, sides. I, I, I will say in the in the preceding clip, the on air staff made a big deal about how this intern dressed, and it was she specifically said it was because Donald Trump was a guest on the show that day. Uh, so okay. that was her. That that was that was her motivation. She yeah. Okay. Well, that, it worked. That was her wish. Yeah. Yeah, it worked for her. Well, you know, then good. Then good on her. You know, I, I have nothing against that. You want to go and be flirty and do that. As long as there's that mutual consent, then great. Go do it. Right. You know, but I I, I just don't like his comments. And honestly, she may have, maybe it was just because she was nervous to be on camera. But she had the fear of God in her eyes as I'm watching her. And she looked like she needed to be rescued. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Yeah, I agree with you, Play. If, if, I, I, and that's what I'm, that's the difference. And thank you for saying that. Consent is always the difference. Cause like two mutual flirters, like whatever, right? But yeah. Well, put yourself in her position. She's a young intern. Whether or not she's actually being paid, I doubt it. She doesn't really know anything about this man because of what you said about nothing being recorded. He's always been a disgusting misogynist. We just really know now because of all of the videos and all the recordings and all of this stuff coming to light. That young intern shows up to work and is told, yeah, this rich guy that everybody thinks is such a business genius is coming into the show and he's he's charming. He's got like charisma in the room, et cetera. She's just one trying to appeal to her boss and being a good worker, which is very much a part of the patriarchy. Oh, just be nice and say yes and be cute and be flirty and and all that kind of stuff. And two, maybe, you know, that's a situation where if you think about the imbalance of power between men and women, the fact that women couldn't get credit cards on their own, couldn't buy a house, et cetera. We have been taught, several generations have been taught to look for somebody who can take care of and provide for you. Yeah. If you meeting a rich guy who you think is cute or whatever, of course she's going to flirt. Of course she'd like, that would behoove her to have him like her or be interested in her based yeah. on the power dynamics at the time. And you're so yeah, right. The power gap was really the what power. I was thinking of. Once again. Yeah. The power. You're so right. In this clip, we see the reaction of residents as they see remnants of the bridge wash up on the shores of their respective neighborhoods. 
Rivera Beach residents tell 11 News they watched as some of the debris from the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse floated in the water of the Patapsco River and settled near the shoreline of their community. I actually noticed it floating in as we were looking out over to see the wreckage. Mark Ozarowski is a community member and monitor. Those investigating the Key Bridge collapse tell 11 News they began receiving calls about debris this past Sunday. According to the Maryland Department of the Environment, an inspector responded to Rivera Beach Sunday and confirmed the presence of wood debris with metal parts at three locations. The families living here are wondering what are the next steps at getting the debris removed. We knew that we were going to have some kind of ripple effect, but we need to understand, you know, what's, what we, we can't afford to, you know, take care of this stuff. It's, it's huge, right? The debris is washing up is large. We don't have the means to deal with it. Um, so we need some support. They've been asking where to turn. We've been talking to the delegate Brian Chisholm's office. We've talked to the Army Corps of Engineers. We've talked to the Coast Guard Yard. So finally last night we got another uh, phone number mm -hmm. uh, to call. And uh, our beachkeeper liaison has called that number. And they have other concerns as cleanup efforts continue. Now we're looking for removal, but there's also, you know, some collateral damage that we feel is going to take place once they start dredging, you know, under the harbor and all. What's the, the water going to be like? And, you know, we don't really know. That guy can't be a local if he's, if, if now he's concerned about what the harbor water is like. Right. Like, does anybody, it's not swimmable. You don't, you don't fish and eat that. It's like... What They're having mean? the first harbor swim this summer. <laughs> they are like it, it, this, the harbor's been getting steadily cleaner, and um, like I I work there and I walk around it and I see crabs and I see turtles and I see big fish. My my coworker who's an avid fisherman saw cow nosed rays in the harbor. Um, They're dolphin like, like right at the mouth of the harbor. I mean, like Harbor East, like where Harbor. Like, like where? the inner, like, like, really? He saw the, um, I've seen turtles by the science center and he oh. saw the, um, the, the, the rays right by, like, right in front of Harbor Place for those yeah, who know yeah. From Harbor. So. Yeah, I know. I used to work at Laureate there down in Harbor East, so I know. Yeah, I'm just thinking of listeners and stuff. But oh, was, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, but even still, I just felt like he was just like, well, what, what? We can't deal with this wood. It's floating. <laughs> I mean, the bridge collapsed. Yeah, but now we've got to deal with the stuff. It's floating and there's metal. I mean, what are we going to do? Like, I don't know. It's just, yeah, because a bridge collapsed, right? It's just, oh, I just wanted to shake him. I'm surprised. I've, I've searched through a lot of these clips. I'm surprised I didn't find anybody who said, Oh, these would make great pieces to build a pickup truck bed cover, because that that would have been that that would have been my first guess as to what they wanted to do with these pieces. In the days following Trump's various arrests and indictments, the media has been on a tightrope trying to cover the first criminal trial of a former president of the United States as if it's a regular news story. Some of the on-air talking heads, however, have had enough as former RNC chair Michael Steele demonstrates in this clip. Watching this from afar, if you saw Donald Trump behind bars, you know, cuffed or, you know, mm -hmm. frog walked out of that courtroom, I mean, his numbers would go sky high, his fundraising would go off the charts. Does he have an unlimited amount of people willing to put money into his pocket to pay for his trials? Well, let's do it and find out. <laughs> why, why are we concerned? Why are we concerned about how much money he raises off of a perp walk? How, why are we concerned how much how much ire is cast upon the system by his sycophantic followers? If the justice system is doing its justice correctly and fairly, um, yeah, those of us in the political space will know. Okay, yeah, that's a political problem for him. And it's a political opportunity for his opponents. That's the politics of this. But our system shouldn't be beholden, Andrea, to concerns about whether or not Donald Trump raises money and his numbers go up if the system is doing what it's supposed to do. And if he is convicted, 
then in my view, all of the entrapments of being a former president should be stripped away. So there is no concern about security in a jail cell because then he's a convicted felon. He's not a former president. I would love to see more of this. And we're just not seeing it on supposedly liberal networks like you know MSNBC and, and CNN has its own issues. They've been taken over by a very, very conservative owner. Their lineup's been changed. But mm -hmm. of all people, it's a former like, mainstream Republican who has to go ahead and say, hey, this is a possibility. This might happen. We should be talking more about this. Yeah, well, I mean, Steele, Steele has definitely softened his conservatism. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's ironically because he's the one who actually put them in the position that they are now. He's the one that changed their focus to, to local elections and to school boards and stuff and building from the ground up and then they sort of threw him under the bus and threw him out so i think he uh he unlike a lot of the conservative talking heads uh feels no uh, allegiance uh except to what he really believes in the truth so that's why he can say that kind of stuff you know well I, i'd also say steel is clearly um multiple degrees of IQ higher than anybody else in the Republican Party that's right. still there. Um, I also noted in the video in the back, he had a Johns Hopkins hat on, so he is well educated. Um, but, you know, the, the point here is that you've got somebody like that who can look at this and I, when he said, go ahead, you know, convict him and, and let's watch the numbers go up. I think he knows something, which is, I don't believe there are these neutral people out there, not sure if they like Donald Trump or not. But if he goes to jail, I'm going to really love him. I, I think you either love Trump or you don't. I don't think that there's many people that are going to make the numbers go up any higher than they are now simply because he goes to jail. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think they go down some. Maybe not a lot, but some. It, I mean, it's true. I, I do agree with him in theory. I love his theory. But the political justice system, you know, won't do its job. It doesn't do its job for the common person like, you know, myself. So why is it going to work for him? I mean, if he's we should keep track of how much money he's got, because if he's got the money, then he's just going to buy his way out like everybody else. I, I do feel like we're sort of through the looking glass because now I agree with this person that I didn't for so very, very long. <laughs> and I I guess I'm personally rather skeptical of mm -hmm. the polls because it's, you know, we've established there there is a bias within the reporting news organizations. Um there so how are these surveys, how are these polls being conducted? Who's, you know, who's being contacted? It doesn't really seem like we're being presented the news as more we're being presented an episodic bravo series at this point right well, i mean the problem the problem with polls is the the data that you get is from the people that answer polls and so that's not that is not a a a real uh clear um I don't think there's a, a real clear study that that is an actual indication of the general public at large, you know? It, it, it can't be. I mean, when I was a kid, people would call the house and ask who you were going to vote for, and I'd be like, whoever, you know? I would just <laughs> Mrs. Moore, my fourth line. grade teacher, I voted for her. <laughs> oh, no, no. I would not say that, no, I would pick a candidate, but mm -hmm. it would never be the same candidate. So somebody would call and be like, okay, I'm... I'm a Republican today. I'm voting for this. You know, somebody mm -hmm. would else call say, you know, a couple hours later. Oh, no, I'm, you know, voting for this Democratic candidate. What did I care? I was 12. And you were still so trolling pollsters then. That's, that's awesome. Right. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> yeah. But she's the reason, like she's the reason that Ronald Reagan was elected. <laughs> I'm not that old, sir. <laughs> As with anything involving Donald Trump, a debate about his treatment at his trial usually derails and the disaster factor escalates quite quickly. As we can see in this video of Trump supporters and their opposing protesters outside the courthouse in New York. Hunter Biden's laptop matters! Hunter Biden's laptop matters! Hunter Biden's laptop matters! So far it hasn't been a thing. So show me your company. So far it hasn't you 
you're a woman. Cheese, bitch. That's not being a woman, honey. You are disgusting. You're a man. You're a man, bitch. You can't take away biology, bitch. You're a man. You're a brick. You're a brick, bitch. You look like a man. Bitch, you look hard. You look hard. Never, darling. Never. You are a charlatan. Fuck charlatan. Your point. That's what you is. Your point. That's what you is. Your point. Your point. This is you. Charlatan. That's what you is. That's what you is. And people wonder why I don't want to go out anymore. It's like Jerry Springer's show has come back. Five thousand. Now it's just everywhere on the streets. Let's let's. I want to point out it cost five thousand dollars for that work. The nine thousand. Nine, she said. Nine. Yeah. Well, I, I I watched that video quite a few times. So <laughs> I mean, I, I had to I had to edit it. Oh it yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the woman next to her holding the uh, lock him up sign, uh, moving the, moving the sign over as if <laughs> going to block. The display. I thought that was uh, the sign wasn't big enough, but it was. It was. A very, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but it was a. <laughs> that was funny too. The old, the older woman with the lock him up sign. I, I still know, don't I know what sure. she was blathering about. Whose side was she on? And, she had and an it was odd that she had an AIDS walk T-shirt yeah, from 2019. Mm -hmm. What the so hell? She was, was that walking even? for. I. I I do not understand. Um, and what was the point? You know, look, I have ginormous boobs. I I don't understand. I, I don't. What I I I got nothing, guys. I I just I don't understand people polite. at all. Let me ask polite this on the intersection. This, if there's a Venn diagram of people who do AIDS walks. <laughs> and people who are concerned about the Hunter Biden uh, laptop, are, is she the only one there in, in the intersection? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> the yes, only thing absolutely. that meets in the middle of that intersection are boobs. And I'm going to do <laughs> big intersection. It's, not, it's a very small intersection. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tom, I'll just say it right now. Thank you. That's the most action I've had in the last three years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> And I agree. Free the boobies. <laughs> in conclusion, I take issue when people from outside Baltimore call us a shithole because we're only known for drugs and crime. That's wrong. We're a shithole because we never know when and how to finish our roads. If you look at historical photos and images of major cities like Baltimore in their early days, you look at them and reflect how much better they would be to travel on than Maryland roads during their never-ending state of improvement. Since the release of my joke about Maryland's official state flower, the black-eyed Susan, sounding like a domestic violence victim, I've heard tell that Maryland officials are now contemplating a change to the official state flower, making it the trench plate they put in the road during road work. But as much as I abhor travel, traveling by car and train are still among my favorite methods. I have more freedom, as I often feel constricted by airlines, their boarding procedures, and ticket prices. Unless absolutely necessary... I am still motivated to travel by road and rail, not by plane. In fact, I won't travel by plane unless the airline's Wi-Fi unblocks porn websites. <laughs> Good night. This episode was written and hosted by Tom Myers with panelists Jeff Heisen, Gina Brown, Blight Kitty, Michelle Wojcikowski, Valerie Pascal, Chip Jones, Chris O'Connor, Laurel Kathleen, Jim Meyer, Ward Morrow, Nicole Blessing, and David Kay. Theme music composed and arranged by Jeroen Vandenheerik. Executive producers, Tom Myers, Matt Connerton for IPM Nation, and Eddie Carson for Odyssey Radio. Please leave a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Tom Myers, for access to ad-free episodes, extended episodes, and bonus clips. Thank you for listening, and please visit tommyers.us.